Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt, and today I'm going to show you how to make light beer at home. So let's go. One of the great things about home brewing is sharing your home brew with others. I've got a group of friends that are fellow bartenders. We get together on Sundays, watch football, and then whenever I create a batch, uh, I you know, whatever I make, I take it to them. They're kind of like my personal guinea pigs. But the guinea pigs have made a request. They want light beer or regular guy beer, as they like to say. Uh, I make things like mead and sizers, and I've tried wine and stuff like that. They, <laughs> they want regular guy beer, i.e. light beer. So that's what we're going to do today is uh, make a light beer. Uh, real quick, I want to go over what makes light beer light beer you know and avoid some of the misconceptions it's not regular beer watered down they don't take regular Budweiser just add water to make Bud Light um, the concept behind these beers the American light lager um, is that starting about a hundred years ago or so that we wanted a beer for the American worker the guy who was working in the factory um, they wanted something more sessionable. That's the term used for craft beer. So we dropped the ABV. Uh, we wanted a lighter flavor. We didn't want to get, you know, weighed down or bloated. Uh, so they created the lighter lager style here in America. Well, move on into the now late 60s, 70s. People were coming even more health conscious. Want even lower calorie beer. Um, the first light beers are actually called diet beers. Uh, how they are produced is when I brew a beer we'll use uh, we'll use mar malt, barley malt um, and we will do a mash in to convert the starches in that barley into sugars. That sugar becomes maltose. Um, maltose is not the most efficient sugar in fermentation so to get enough fermentable sugar sometimes you have to add additional malt barley malt and that's additional calories. We're getting additional carbs, what have you. So what the big brewers did was they found an enzyme that makes that malt conversion more efficient. Thus we need less malt in the mash bill, less calories in there. Um, also what they do in these light beers, because again we're going for as light a body as possible, light a flavor as possible, is that you, they uh, use what they're called adjunct other sugars, fermentable sugars, into the mash bill instead of that barley malt that again is not 100% efficient. Also does provide body and flavor. The two most popular here in the U.S. are corn and rice. Now you've probably seen Bud Light do a lot of commercials about the competitors using corn syrup and they don't, uh, but they do use rice. And they use, uh, specifically rice syrup solids or rice solids. What both of these do, the corn and the rice do, is they provide fermentable sugars, but they don't add anything to the body and they don't really affect the flavor. Uh, corn more than rice, on the flavor, as the bird knows, but um, they, they help achieve a lighter body beer, uh, but we still get the fermentables that we need for fermentation. Um, they also lighten the color a little bit. Um, again, you wouldn't be able really to make a true light beer without using those. And most of the recipes in the U.S. you either have rice or corn. Uh, the one we're going to use today is rice syrup solids. So this beer will come out more in the Bud Lightish strain than the Coors Light, uh, Miller Light uh, variety. So with that being said, let's make some light beer. All right, before we get to brewing, let's real quickly review this recipe. I will have it uh, down below for you too, so you don't need to write this down. Um, we're going to have only two main ingredients. We're going to have uh, light malt extract. Um, this batch is a one gallon batch. We're going to use 9.6 ounces of light malt extract. You want the lightest malt extract you can get. We're making a light beer. Um, next we're going to use rice syrup salts. That's our adjunct uh, that we're using here. Um, you can buy these one pound bags either at your home brew shop or online. I will leave a link down below. If you click on that you'll 
help the channel and we always appreciate that. We are going to use 6.4 ounces of the rice syrup solids. Uh, we are going to have three hop additions throughout the process. At the start of the boil, we're going to add US size hops, uh, 5.6 grams. At the 15 minute point, we will add 2.8 grams of Vanguard. And then with two minutes left in the boil, we'll add another 2.8 grams of Vanguard. Both those hops are low alpha acid hops. They are not, they are designed for lager beers. They are not going to overpower you with hot flavor, bitterness, aroma. Uh, these are complementary hops to a light beer style. Um, so they work perfect for what we're going to use. Uh, yeast wise, we're going to use the SAF Lager S23 Lager Yeast. Uh, at, at the end, I'll go over more specifically um, the lager yeast, lager yeast temperatures, the birds, the birds fire up about lager yeast. So, review the recipe, let's get to making some light beer. Alright gang, so we're bringing three quarts of water up to a boil. Uh, one thing you want to do when home brewing, you always want to use an oversized pot um, to prevent boil over. Uh, when we add our extract, you'll get, you'll get quite a bit of head on it, so you want to make sure this is a three gallon pot. We've got three quarts of water in there, so I'm not worried about uh, boil over. Also, too, a little trick. You might want to pre-measure everything, put them in one of these little storage containers, make sure brew day just a little easier if you want to do it the night before, or, you know, while prepping. Just makes it easier. Let me see here, we're up to a boil. So we'll kill the heat. You want to make sure to kill the heat before you add uh, the extract in because again, too, that, that, that could cause a boil over. So we got our 9.6 ounces of uh, light dried malt extract. Just dump that in there. Give it a good stir. Oh, I love that smell of that malt. Until something beautiful is happening. Give this a good stir. Next, we'll add our 6.4 ounces of the rice solid, rice syrup solids. Just dump her straight in too. Now you want to make sure that you have nothing sticking on the bottom. You don't want to scorch anything because that will affect the taste. So make sure everything's completely stirred in. We've got nothing on the bottom. Once you get everything completely stirred in, bring back up the heat to the boil. And when it starts boiling, start your uh, 60 minute boiling timer. So let me get this stirred in and we'll come back for the start of the boil. All right, so now we brought our solution, which we would call wort at this time. Uh, we brought her back up to boil. So our 60 minute boil is starting. Uh, we need to add our hop, our first hop addition, which is the US size, 5.6 grams. We'll just pitch those in. Real quick stir, oh, you, you smell the, uh, the hops. Also too, you get, you'll get a little boil up when you add uh, hops too. So again, it's important to have plenty of head space uh, when you do these boils. Real quick, uh, some of you out there may have noticed that we're making a one gallon batch, but I have three quarts of water in here. That is so when we get done with the boil, we can cool off our work quicker by adding having one quart of uh, cold water. It'll be ice and cold water, um, and that will get us down to the proper temperature to pitch our yeast. Um, so we added our first hop addition. Let's come back at the 15 minute mark and do our next hop addition. All right, so we have about 15 minutes left in our boils, and we're going to do our next hop addition. It's 2.8 grams of Vanguard hops. Those right in. Give it a quick stir and we'll come back for our last hop addition. All right, we have two minutes left in our boil and we're going to do our last hop addition. It's 2.8 grams of Vanguard, another addition of Vanguard hops. We're going to toss that in. 
give it a quick stir. Like I so said, we got a couple more minutes on the boil. Then we're going to cut off the heat and we're going to try to cool our wort down as fast as possible. Um, because this is a lager beer, we're going to ferment at cooler temperatures. So if we were doing our traditional like a blonde ale, we would want to get our temperature down to room temperature somewhere in the low 70s before we pitched our yeast. With this, we're going to want to get it down to closer to 60. So when we finish up the boil, we will go ahead and chill our wort. We'll add the additional cold water to get to the proper volume. And uh, once I get everything in the fermenter, we'll come back to wrap up. All right, gang, we're back. I've chilled the wort down, got her in the fermenter, and pitched the yeast. Uh, also did gravity reading. Our gravity came out at 1.050, which is a little on the high end. I was looking for somewhere between 0.45 and 0.050. So we're on the higher end, but nothing uh, too crazy. Um, our finishing gravity we want to shoot for is somewhere between 1.005 and 1.010. That should get us in the high fours on ABV, which again is kind of what we're shooting for. Um, real quick, let's review the recipe. For one gallon batch of our light lager, we use 9.6 ounces of light dried malt extract. You want to make sure it's light as possible because we're making a light beer. Uh, then we use 6.4 ounces of rice syrup solids. Um, after we added that, uh, we brought our uh, beer to a boil. Uh, at the start, of the, we did a 60-minute boil. At the start of the boil, we added 5.6 grams of U.S. size hops. 15 minutes left in the boil, we added 2.8 grams of Vanguard hops. And then with two minutes left in the boil, we added 2.8 more grams of Vanguard hops. We chilled our wort and then pitched the yeast. The yeast we're using is the Saf Lager S23 Lager Yeast. Um, Y yeast, White Labs, they all have a light lager yeast out there. So whichever one you feel like using, feel free on that. Um, where we're going from here is I'm going to ferment this at 55 degrees. A lot of the ales, especially the kits I've used in the past, we would use room temperature. Uh, we would ferment in room temperature. Lager yeast works better at cooler temperatures. So you might need to find a spot in the basement, maybe a spot in the garage It's a little cooler this time of year. I have a repurposed cake fridge, so I'm going to leave it in there. We're going to leave it in the fermenter for a week to 10 days. We'll come back to a gravity reading. If we hit those, whenever we hit those final gravity targets, we will then go ahead and bottle, uh, and we will leave those bottles. We will, uh, what they would do in Germany is they call lagering. That's where the term lager comes from. We would lager the bottles at refrigerator temperatures, high 30s, low 40s. Uh, you will want to let those sit for about a month or so, five weeks, probably so 30 to 40 days in a fridge. So we're looking at about a six week total process before we have a beer ready to drink. Um, again, the lager temperatures help the yeast produce a cleaner finish. You don't get those funky esters like you do from ale uh, yeast because ale yeast works at ale temperatures. Um, anyway, that is uh, it. So in about six weeks, I'll have a beer ready to drink. Uh, I'll do either a quick video or maybe a post on Twitter or, or something whenever the beer comes out. Uh, well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. So please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, especially about this beer or any other beers you brewed and that's something I can help you with, please leave them in the comments section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.